Uh, NCSA was kind of a special place, right? Um, one of those things that happens very infrequently where there's lots of energy, a uh, large amount of resources, visionary leadership, and a lot of free space for people to play. Larry recognized from the beginning, and we all love the idea, um, that these small little things on the desktop were really the gateways for everybody to the big machines in the background. And that all of this would turn into one cloud behind the, the, the screen that we needed to figure out how to get the user involved in as much as possible. Initially, our interest was in synchronous tools. Um, when we were thinking of collaboration tools. So we were building something called NCSA Collage, which was a set of tools that worked. And one of the big deals was that they worked across the three platforms. Um, the X Windows for the Unix people, uh, the Windows environment, and the Mac. And that was one of the things that was sort of part of the underlying culture there was that we wanted to make them available to as large a community as possible. So we started working on collaborative tools and there was a set of people in each of the, on each of those machines that was working to make it possible for people to share in real time images of their data, the uh, spreadsheets of their data, and um, papers that they had uh, run across interesting references to uh, with their colleagues who were remote from them geographically. So that's the context in which Dave Thompson, who was one of the developers, one of the X Windows developers, the lead X Windows developer, I think, for the collage tool, um, pulled down one of the early um, web browsers. And it was the one from Slack. He went through the effort of getting it working and brought it in and showed it to Mark Andreessen and I. And both of us looked at the screen. Dave described what he had in front of us. Um, and we said, we can do better than that. That's a complicated system and the interface looks terrible. And it, Dave said that it was a real pain for, it to, for him to get it working, for him to download it, install it, and compile it and everything. And it only works on an X Windows box. And wouldn't it be cool if it worked across all three of the boxes and if it was something that was just a plug and go like the rest of our tools? Mark and Eric were working on that, the first generation of uh, NCSA Mosaic. And this was an X-Windows uh, app. And nobody was working yet on the Windows or the Mac version. And we saw the first version of that come out, when was it, early 93, late 92? And um, it was probably early 93. And the response, of course, was fantastic. It's wonderful to be able to just click on something and see it right away. And indeed, the combination of um, hyperlinks in a document as far as navigation and retrieval of documents as a user interface is just great. And a lot of people um, got it immediately, especially people that were working with um, the tools at NCSA and the companies. I remember an HP exec coming in one time and uh, Mark and Eric had written a little filter that took Unix um, uh, documentation and made it into HTML and made all of the references into links. And they went to, they hit an HP site uh, and the exec said, where's this coming from? because he was able to see all of his HP documentation there in the room at NCSA and navigate through it real easily. And he said, well, you've got three or four folks back there that have put up uh, HTTPD servers. You may not know what those are yet. And he said, I've never heard of this. And we said, but this is the kind of thing that um, is probably going to be really useful in the future for people who are trying to manage documentation in a distributed fashion. Yada, 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 right? We went on with a story like that. And this guy was bouncing up and down in his seat. And this was the kind of response that we got with it. In 93, late 93, early 94, there's this full suite of mosaics that work across the X Windows, the Mac, and the Windows system. And that's the point at which um, the guy who was the president at the time of the internet, um, association said NCSA has fired a shot heard around the world because it's available now across all these platforms and anybody can use it. And we saw, you know, an exponential growth in the number of HTTPD servers and the amount of traffic, yada, yada, yada. 
all that stuff that went on there. And Tim, of course, Tim Berners-Lee at this time, would say, well, he had seen an exponential growth from the very beginning, and he's right. Um, we're both right. We had seen it from the time we brought out the browsers, and they certainly helped with it, but there was already an underlying exponential, I think, that was going on in people being able to put up their materials easily with HTML and do all that. I remember sitting in rooms with um, commercial folks that came in and pitched to us, um, and I'd bring the whole team in, um, the whole software development group, and say, listen to these guys, and you know, tell me what you think about this. Um, and we were, nobody was sure what it was going to do. And there were people who uh, started off uh, building browsers and just kind of never got off the ground. It wasn't until um, the Netscape effort started up uh, that there was sufficient energy and sufficient resources, I think, to really get on and ride and push um, and, and, you know, crank up a group of X hundred developers uh, in a matter of months. And then they were, you know, quickly overshadowed by the effort that um, Microsoft put into it. I remember one of the Netscape guys saying, um, I came back from a meeting with some folks up in Seattle, and they said that Microsoft now had, this is when Netscape was writing at the top of its form, right? Top of the game. This guy says, Microsoft just told me that there's this, somebody from Microsoft just said that they've got like 2,000 developers working on this. He said, at that point, I realized that we were you know, going to have some difficulties. Um, and we, of course, always felt that there should be more than one browser. Um, and so we wanted to, see, because we were interested in standards and openness right at the time, if one, there's only one browser, then that company gets to determine what the standards are. And there were all kinds of hassles early on about um, putting in different features and the browsers driving the standards rather than the standards driving the browsers and all this kind of stuff. So we wanted some diversity. Um, but nobody, I don't think, in 93, maybe by 94, but in 93 we were still amazed at what we had and amazed at the response and just tickled pink, thrilled with the whole idea of this being something that was uh, a lot of people were going to find useful and that we were going to have a lot of fun playing with. We had no real sense. Everybody talked, we talked about all the possibilities, but we had no real sense that it would take off and simply monetize so quickly. If you go back and you ask people um, who were sitting in front of machines in 1993, 94, 95, right? Uh, and you say, do you remember the first time that you used Mosaic, right? Or do you remember the first time you used a browser if it wasn't Mosaic? And vast majority of them that, I, that I've run into say, yeah, I can remember.